just look at what's in the news today. It, it's August 2021, late August, and what are the big stories? The big stories are in Florida, there's a dispute over whether they can force districts, whether the state can force districts to make masks optional, basically disallowing the school board to impose a mask mandate. So the argument is that we believe masks are a restriction of freedom, and as such, we don't want the schools dictating that freedom or lack of freedom on students. And if you don't comply, we will find out your salaries and we will defund that money from the school board. Meaning, I presume, either teachers or administrators or both. So they're going to go to the individual boards within a specific county of the state of Florida. And essentially, they're threatening to stop the flow of money. They're going to take your salary and divide it by 12, and every month, that's what they're going to withhold. So you're going to have to find other ways to pay your bills. And so it, raised, it raises the argument, or at least it raises the principle of, if you're, imagine you're a teacher in that board, and you believe strongly that children need to be protected and that masks are one element of that protection from COVID. And I realize I'm getting a bit political here, but bear with me. Imagine for once being able to say, I don't care what my boss or employer tells me. I'm going to do what I feel is right for the people that I serve. I took this job not to please the board, not to please the district, not to please the state, but to serve the children of my community. And if you put me in a position where I no longer can serve them, when I can't do what I feel is right for them, when you tell me not only what is right, but you threaten me, my livelihood, my job, my income, if I don't obey, where's your autonomy? Where's your sense of sovereignty? It's at that point, what would you do? What would you as an individual do faced with that decision? You believe one way, the state believes the other way. And it's not like you're breaking a law. It is simply saying, if you choose to do this, if you don't listen to us, if you don't do what we tell you, you're basically going to lose your money, your income, your job. Would you believe that you need to stand up and say, I'm going to do what I think is right. And if it costs me my job, so be it. Now, the reason I mention this is, where do you see that kind of courage, that kind of certainty in the environments in which we work? Don't you feel, don't you notice as you go around Maybe if you're like me and you're a contractor, you go from place to place to place and you see all these different environments and you realize that most people are just following a script. They're doing what the job description says. Whatever is written in the spot that describes how they're being measured and how they'll be compensated and rewarded, whatever it says in that box, that's what they're going to do. They're not going to do anything more. They're not going to do anything different. They're going to do what it says. Now, we go in and we expect them to understand change. We expect them to shoulder the risk of going in front of your colleagues and your peers and saying, you know what? Let's do it differently. Let's forget what we've been told about the way we've always done things, about the right way, about the old way. And instead, let's do something that we believe is right. 
what you've been paid for, what you've been trained for, what you've been entrusted with, every now and again, it's your moment. It's time to take a risk. It's time to step outside your comfort zone. Do something that scares the hell out of you because you believe it's right. I think that we don't need to teach people scrum, agility, stand-up skills, retro skills, story estimation skills, story splitting skills. I think we need to teach them how to step outside their comfort zone. How to latch on to the why are you here, who do you serve, why do you care, what does that mean? What does a beautiful future look like? And then to roll with it. And I feel like if we're not doing that every day, that's one thing. It's one thing to not reach and not do things that inspire yourself. It's one thing to be stuck in a routine or a pattern. But it's another thing to go against your own grain and to choose not to do what you know to be right in service of the people you serve. And here I don't mean your company's code of ethics. We all know we have to follow that. We all know we have to blow the whistle. But... Don't you feel every once in a while like we're just on a treadmill? I mean, who are we really living for? Are we living for ourselves? For fulfillment? Or are we living for the best interests of the people who sign our checks? There is nothing wrong with getting a check. There's nothing wrong with making your boss happy. But there is something wrong with failing to live up to your greatest potential simply because it's hard or scary to make a decision. It's hard or scary to do something different. I think it's in those moments where all the nobility lies, don't you? So how can we encourage and teach our teams to feel that burden? To feel that duty. We have a duty as leaders to inspire our people to do their greatest work. Every regime, and I know that word's a loaded word, but every regime of every kind at some point requires bold an unrelenting resistance in order to make change, in order to make people see. And what I feel like is that most of the time, agile is the regime. Agile is the regime, and everybody else is the resistance. I feel like it should be the other way around. I feel like the way we've historically done things, the traditional roles, the traditional stances, the traditional abbreviations and keywords, those things are the regime. We should be the resistance. And you know how I know? Because when we do this right, when we fulfill our duty, when we earn our position, of agile coach, of transformation leader, of leader, of cultural pioneer, when we claim that title and do our job, people tell us that we've opened their eyes. People tell us that they feel different. People tell us that this is the kind of change they've been waiting for. That they were literally waiting for permission to speak and to do what they knew was right, what they knew was important to do, but they just couldn't find the right time. There never seemed to be anyone who was on their side who would have their back. Your job is to have their back. Your job is to go first. We're so afraid of getting canceled, aren't we? We're so afraid that if we say the wrong thing, that we're going to get pushed out, we're going to lose our job, we're going to lose our income, we're going to lose esteem, lose respect, lose our pride, lose our meaning. But in truth, those are the things that happen when you don't take a stand.
There's so many things in the news right now where people are second guessing common sense. They're second guessing science. They're second guessing classical wisdom. We're so attached to being right that we're afraid to let go. Look at what's happening as we withdraw troops from Afghanistan. We're so certain that this was the right course that if things don't go the way we expected, we'll stay the course even if it proves to be terribly, terribly wrong. What would be so wrong with saying, we didn't plan this correctly, we didn't see this coming, we didn't account for this outcome, and now we have to adjust and adapt? It's not the same thing as saying I quit. It's not the same thing as admitting that you were incompetent or you couldn't do the job. All you're saying is, this is different than what I expected. And real leadership is not about being right. It's not about making a choice once and then never taking counsel from the people that you trust, from the people that know, from the people that pay your bills. That's not what leadership is. It's going to require strength to do what must be done. Because when I coach, what I see is a culture of people who are just keeping the lights on. They're running in the hamster wheel doing all the things they think they're supposed to be doing because it's the way they've been trained to do it because some outcomes on a piece of paper say that this is what we must value instead of choosing values of their own values that are harmonious with them values that resonate with them values that inspire them that make them feel alive well when do we give them permission to live that life when do we help those people do what they know to be right not just what they know to be familiar These are hard decisions. And if they were easy, everyone would be doing them, and everyone would love change. Everyone would love agility. Everyone would love all of the things that Agile promises. But at the end of the day, one of the things that I've learned is inside or outside of Agile, I don't care what context you're coming from, but doing well is achievable only one way. Success only comes from one thing. Hard, disciplined work. Willingness to fail. The grit to get up and do it again. Knowing that somehow, some way, you'll figure it out. And eventually, if you keep doing it, you keep trying it, if you're consistent, and you're passionate, and you're value-driven, you get it right. Things will change. All you have to do is look at the news and see that the alternative just ain't working. So what could we change? How could we lead a better way of thinking? A better way that doesn't always come down to 50-50 votes or 51-49 votes. How can we lead in ways that don't divide people but unite them? This is as important in politics, on the world stage, the global health crisis, as it is in the boardrooms and in the classrooms. We have grown. We're bigger than we were 20 years ago. The stakes are higher. We live in a world where everything is very visible. Mistakes, truths, untruths, travels the globe in a second. We didn't set the stage properly. It's time for us to lead differently. Lead first with integrity, with the decision, with the courage to be different, the courage to do what our values say we most want to do. Thank you, my friends.